Are you ready to go ahead and just lean into the spirit and to reach after the spirit? Brother Arnold, we love you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for letting me come. Uh, it, it is a special treat to me to be here. I told him, I said, I preached so good 10 years ago, they never invited me back. <laughs> and I have no problem with having a high watermark. I had a lot of high watermarks. But I am honored to be with you, and I was so happy when Sister Varnum was so kind to ask me about coming down to do a little something for Brother Jason and and uh, then she said, you know, you could preach if you were here. And I said, well, if I was asked, I'll come. <laughs> she said, well, you're asked. I said, well, I'm coming. It's fine. <laughs> Amen. Now, as I just told the bishop, it's so great to see you. I was telling Alex, I remember when I went to your old church, when I first met you at that low ceiling and like a wild buffalo herd just jumping everywhere and going... Here it is 35 years later. Ain't nothing changed. It's just bigger. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, I'm the only thing between you and groceries, so I will get in here as quick as I can. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're smiling at me because I can't see past the second, third row. I just can't see it all. But I, I want to direct your attentions to the first book of Kings, chapter 19. If you would just turn there with me. As I apologize to Brother Varnum and Brother Varnum, I, I usually bring a light with me so I can see, and that light, you know what that light reminds me of? A flashback to my younger days. <laughs> Amen. First Kings 19. I'll, I'll be go as quickly as I can. And, and Ahab told Jezebel, verse 1, all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now that old loud mouth babe is so full of hot air, I don't know why she's not floating. Now I know it seems like she's being intimidating. She's being a fool. Here's what she said. The gods, what gods? Not the ones that didn't answer on the caramel. What, what gods are you threatening us with? You ain't got none of the nincompoops that can even drop some fire. Well, I gave you my latest book for your birthday present. Now I'm going to give you a second one. Go to that chapter when it says, and they called, Baal, hear us, Baal, hear us. Read this scripture. But there was no God to answer. The tragedy of this generation is they got gods that can't answer. But I know a God that can answer. Hold it. We, 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 got, we got to go quick here. I don't want to play the crowd here. Um, okay, now watch it. said, I'll make your life as one of them about this time tomorrow. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. If you study that, he went 90 miles. That's a pretty good run. 90 miles. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Now, some of the, pay, the best people of God sometimes will lie. <laughs> so you're in good company. And here's why. He said he requested for himself to die. Are you a fool? 90 miles ago, that old bag was willing to kill you. You didn't have to run 90 miles. Just wait on the chick to show up. She'll kill you tomorrow. Which to me becomes a revelation. Sometimes our prayers are not honest. 
He wasn't wanting to die. He was wanting some divine pity. Boy, I'm talking good right now. I'm sorry to keep you so long. I just, we'll get to the food in a second. He said, requested for himself that he might die. It's enough, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And he lay and slept under the juniper tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, uh, and behold, there were the cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid him down again. Which one of us would have a visit from an angel and go back to sleep? Unless you're used to dealing with them. Now watch, he goes back to sleep. Oh, I feel good. I feel like preaching. He laid him down again, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Okay, now I got a lot of things I want to say, and I'll try to get it in this little (laughs) seven-minute dissertation. I I want to talk to you about the miracle ministry of mistakes. Lord, bless the teaching and help me to be a blessing to these people. Let the Holy Ghost work and move among us. In Jesus' name I pray. Before you're seated, turn around and say, I hate making mistakes. You can sit down. You gotta grab a hold of this because I won't be here long and I probably won't be back for a long time. So that's fine. That ain't no problem. You know, I don't understand why you always have the bald-headed guy come. <laughs> Brother Stone King and Jim Larson and I were out in San Diego preaching a conference. And, and bro- you know how Brother Stone King is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and we were walking around in a health food store, and they're both health nuts. And it was one of these natural things, and it smelled like dead dog meat. It was horrible. They had squid eyeballs. They had all kinds of terrible trash in there, and it was all this natural thing. And I couldn't hardly breathe. I'm going, ooh. And Stone King walks up to me, and he goes, Jeff. You, 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 you need to buy some of this. And I said, what is this? And he says, This is the purest form of protein that you can get anywhere. And I looked at him and I said, Stone King, let me help you with this. He said, there's only two things on the human body that protein produces. One is fingernails. And the other is hair. He said, I said, that protein junk you've been eating is hurting you really bad. I said, you know what this is? Snickers bars. Now, you know, Brother Stone King, he's your favorite here. When I said it to him, you went, oh, hallelujah. You must understand tonight, I'm going as quickly as I can, that mistakes have a ministry, both good and bad. If we do not respond to mistakes correctly, they intend to maim us, maul us, depress us, discourage us, defeat us, and steal our future. But if if you allow a mistake to do what it wants to do, it can take you to a new level. It can take you to a new place because your mistake is not final. Well, I'm going to make you answer me. Anybody in the house ever made mistakes? Ever made bad mistakes? You ready? But you're still here. You're still praising God. You're still worshiping God. You're still living for God because mistakes have a ministry. See, 
Sit, sit, sit down here. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. It's 10 minutes to 7. I'll be done 20 after, 15 after. I just, you got to stay with me. Because mistakes have hidden within there. I never preached this in my life. God gave this to me last week. I got four pages. <laughs> mistakes have not hidden within them hidden doorways, portals of possibility. They become avenues to achievement. Your adversary hates you so bad that he'll do everything he can to keep reminding you about your mistake. I got something to tell you about your God. He don't ever bring up your mistakes. He don't ever rehearse your mistakes. He does never humiliate you or embarrass you about your mistakes. He turns around and says, discover the door that's in your mistake and let it take you to another place that nothing else could have taken you to but the mistake. You, 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 you didn't sit down. I, I hope I'm not being rude or unkind. I just... I just have to, because see, I've had a lifetime of mistakes. I got news for you. Now, if you don't shout on this, wait till we eat. You ready? You may make a mistake, but you ain't a mistake. You may fail, but you are not a failure. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God be for me, it does not matter who or what is against me. Somebody needs to shout at me. I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I don't know how long. I don't know when. I don't know what it's going to take. But I will come out of this. Please, please, please be seated. I, now, I've, I've had the honor and privilege to, to have ministered in this wonderful church numbers of times. And it's always been a special highlight to me. So I know, and I, please don't be offended. I know you're wild as a buck. I know. That. I mean, you talk about churches. Boy, they got good church. Yeah, they, boy, they got good, man, they got a good music program. You see Bell, you say Bellevue, they go, look out. You, you pastor this church is like trying to pastor a stampede. Now, I'm not saying that offensively. I'm happy. You know, pe- people that come to church and just do this. I want to make a rude statement right now. People that come to church and are never carried away ought to be. Well, you don't know like I know what he's done for me I said you don't know like I know how he set me he brought me out of bondage he set my feet on the rock he established my goings he put a song in my mouth you you be seated I'm not trying to be a cheerleader here or work the crowd, but I'm here to tell you, you need to understand something. Your adversary wants to use your mistakes to maim you, to cripple you. I wish I could get an honest person now that would respond to me and say, sometimes in my life I've made a mistake, big one or small one, and the adversary brought it up. You ready for this? I don't care how bad your mistake was. Your ally never brings it up. He uses our mistakes to take us to repentance and to confession and to admission. And once we do that, we don't have a past. All we have is a future. Then you sit up. I, 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 I read this scripture because if you, if you ever came to Gainesville, everybody in Gainesville knows that outside of Jesus, Jeffrey Arnold's favorite guy is Elijah. I love Elijah. I mean, he's my man with the plan from the school to cool. 
He's the cat that I a prophet himself. I love him. He just shuts things down. He outruns chariots. He calls fire down from heaven. He ends fire down from heaven. He ends a, a three and a half year drought with just a little prayer meeting. I, that's my man. I like that guy. I like him. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You better hear what I'm fixing to tell you. You will never change what you're unwilling to confront. If you're not spiritual like you ought to be, well, get off your carcass and get to worshiping God and start praying. And you don't get spiritual by accident. You get spiritual by determination. You get, you, you get spiritual because you pursue it. You reach after it. Please sit down. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm keyed up. You know, I, I'm retired. I mean, they voted a new pastor in there, and he's got all the clout, he's got all the control, he's got all the authority, he's got all the money. I'm just on Social Security and Geritol. That's it. I told them folks the other day, I said, okay, I've been there almost 36 years this, this month. And I said, I, although I'm perplexed about resigning, I said, you know what? I am firmly convinced if you're going to finish, you need to finish strong. I took the church when it was down, when it was a disaster, when it was bankrupt. But it's not a disaster now, and it's not down now, and it's not bankrupt now. So I'm believing God's going to use this new pastor to take us to a new level. Because he don't have to fight what I fought. He don't have to pay off what I had to pay. You need to understand something. If you're a part of this church, you better thank God you're in a lively church. I, I, I don't mean to be offensive, Rev. I'm, I'm not trying to play. Is that Sister Dan? That's Sister Barnum, God. The queen of the hop is here. All right. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sir. I, I, I have a real problem with, with people that you go to church with that don't like the noise and, and they don't like the emotion and they sit there doing their Mount Rushmore impersonation. I, 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 I preached a sermon one Sunday morning. Man, it was so good, I almost bought my own tape. I mean, it was powerful. People were running and bucking and snorting. People getting baptized. I sweat like a dead dog. My hair's hanging down. My socks are rolled down. Man, I can't hardly breathe. And, and excuse my, my, my terminology, this old bag came up to me and she says, well, I just don't think it takes all that. And I'm sitting there, sweat coming down. I go, uh, t takes all what? All this. I said, I bought the microphone. And I said, let me help you with it, Gertrude. If he's never answered a prayer, if he's never brought you through, if he's never made a way where there was no way, then keep your mouth shut and keep your hands folded. But if he ever... If he ever forgave you, if he ever showed mercy to you, if he ever made a way where there was no way, at least you can say thank you. Woo! There goes the herd. There goes the herd. Say, sit down just a minute. We, we, we got to go, go to a party here. You, you, you got to hear me. Please, you got to hear me. Inside every mistake, you got to get this. Inside every mistake we make, inside it, is a doorway to discovery. It is a portal to possibility. Now, I'm not saying go out and rape and plunder and murder and kill so you can make mistakes. No. But what I'm telling you is every mistake, there's something hidden in a mistake that you can learn from. We, we fly planes now thanks to the Wright brothers, but they didn't get it right the first time. 
I appreciate all the light bulbs around here. Thank you, Tom Edison. You only did 900 tests to finally get it right. I, I, get, I get a kick out of these Pentecostal people who just think you shouldn't make mistakes. Let me help you with this. You, you, you can write it off. It's fine. Don't sell the tape. Fine. You're not going to make much progress in your life without making mistakes. Because you don't make a lot of progress by stuff you know. You make progress by stuff you don't know. If you make a hundred on the test, it just shows you you knew the material. If you make a 68, it shows you you got some stuff you got to take care of. So mistakes have a ministry. They can take you to a level that nothing else can take you to. Please, please be seated. I, I, I'm going as fast. Is that clock right? Five yet to seven. Is that right back then? You, you got to get this. Elijah's my man. Fireball Roberts. He's my man. Yet he's sucking his thumb under a juniper tree. I've been there. I, I built a condo there. You know, you know, there ain't no, listen to me. There's no devil can kill me unless God says I got to go. I'm going to go a little further. There's nobody's opinion in this whole movement can shut me down. And I've heard a lot of opinions. I've been damned. I've been condemned. I've been ridiculed. I've been beat up. I've been cursed at. Fine. But I'm still here. And I got no desire to go back to what I used to be in. The church is the greatest thing this side of the glory world. To have your sins forgiven and have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and have the promise of New Jerusalem and the coming of the Lord. Why shouldn't we get excited? Please, please be seated. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. I'm just, crowds make me nervous. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> You see, if we're not careful, we're going to raise a generation that is cursed with a terrible curse. It's called not being thankful. I'm going to make a statement. You can clear it. Bishop, pastor, you can clear it up later. You show me a person that will stay thankful in spite of sorrow, sadness, setbacks, and mistakes. I'll show you somebody that can't be defeated, can't be beaten, and is going to the city. You show me someone that can offer God praise with tears running down their face and offering prayer with sorrow in their heart. I'll show you somebody that hell don't know what to do with. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Happy, happy birthday. Ho, ho, ho. Happy birthday. Mistakes. I'm trying to show you something with this wonderful man, Elijah. I had other things I wanted to show you. I wanted to read you about Gomer. And when you read Hosea chapter 2, Gomer has become a very whorish and immoral woman. And she's produced a bunch of kids. And the Lord said he's not going to have any mercy on her kids because she has committed whoredom. And he turns around and says she's going to chase her lovers. And she's going to go after them. And she thinks that those lovers gave her her flax and her wool and her gold and her stuff. And she didn't know that I did it for her. said, but I'm going to just curb her around so she can't reach her lovers and she can't get back to where she was before here's a wonderful word then shall she say i'm returning to my husband for it was better then than it is now what did he just say mistakes can't stop you I don't care if you've had 15 illegal babies, you've been involved with all kinds of perversions, you've been involved with all kinds of stupid stuff, you haven't been honest with your money, your tithe, your time, it doesn't matter. If you make up your mind that you're coming out of that mistake, can no devil hold you back? Please, please be seated. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. Here, look, I'm trying to tap. I can't see, so I'm just trying to help you right now. You got to understand something. Mistakes can minister to you. That's how we get discoveries in science, in industry, in medicine. What about spiritual? Now, I, I don't want to be offensive. Are we live on the internet? No, are we? Oh, crap.
I'm doomed again. I'll say this as kindly as I can. I'm UPC. I've been UPC ever since I got saved. I'll stay UPC. I don't have such a great allegiance to UPC to walk in error, but I love this movement. I love the people that are in it. I love the doctrine that we're part of. But you have to understand something. Even some of the most wonderful people in this organization will use your mistake to maul you. If I ever heard the voice of God, I heard the voice of God, now I've heard it since then, but three years ago when I made the biggest blunder of my life, when I preached a national conference and said some things I shouldn't have said and, and, and challenged some things I shouldn't have challenged, and it's okay, I've been dumped, I've been under the bus for three years, it's okay. While I was under the bus, I developed a Midas touch. Everything I touch turns to a muffler. Now here, you gotta hear me, I'm trying. Give me this thing. Let me help you with this. When I was praying, I was repenting. I was pleading God's mercy. I was so sorry. I, I, I just made a blunder. I, I preached this thing 31 years. I mean, my stuff's gone all over the world. And I, and I made this blunder. We don't want you no more. You can't preach here no more. We don't want you. And, and so I'm just praying. I said, okay, Lord, it's my fault. Consequences. I deserve every bit of it. I, I, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. And the Lord spoke to me. Changed my life. He said, son, don't ever think I will ever define you by your worst mistake. I will let your people do that. I will let your organization do that. And then he spoke to me, he said, beware, son, your movement is filled with preachers that are baptized with the elder brother spirit. I said, what, what's the elder brother spirit? He said, doesn't matter to him that the father forgave and the father restored and the father was happy that the boy came back. They can just point and say, I know the mistake he made. But the father said, what mistake? He ain't got, he ain't, ain't no, made, no, made no mistake. There's hope for us, no matter how terrible our mistakes have been, that God can wash us, and God can restore us, and God can fix us, and God can bless us, and God... Can I have about 10 minutes? Okay, just 10 minutes. I, I know we got to go to a party. Just sit, sit down here, man. You're going to take the crease out of your pants here. Just sit down. Now watch this. The Lord spoke to me. Now, I know you people don't believe it. I know Bible school, Bible school places, you know, be careful to say that. I said, how come you ain't going to be careful of saying God don't ever talk to me? I gave him my new book. It's my gift to him. I wrote a book. I've had 17 books out of the market. That's number 18, the last one I ever preached. I taught in that. It's going all over the world. We're sending it to every missionary, home and foreign. Okay, we're giving it. And here it is, the greatest need in the Pentecostal rank to hear the voice of God. It's not enough to run your life with Acts 2.38 and one God. It's not enough. We've got to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. My sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Nothing is greater than hearing the voice of God. Please, please be seated. I'm going as fast as I can. I've I, I, got 1,400 messages here I'm trying to preach to you. Being thankful. Thankful. You understand that thankfulness is what drove Satan almost crazy? You understand that that, that bum got thrown out of heaven. Do you have any? No, I've not been in Bible school, so I don't have no cooth. Okay, you, are you ready? Do you know why he got thrown out of heaven? He got thrown out of heaven for non performance. He was the worship leader. Guess who got his job? That's why music and worship drives him crazy. Because he used to be the anointed cherub that covereth, but he got thrown out. You're not going to get close to God if you have another agenda. Oh. Am, am I talking? Am I, am I doing good? Can I, can I talk to you, old father? Sit down there. Sit down there. You, you understand something? 
No, no I, I look stupid, but I'm not stupid. I, I, can, I know the book and I know the author. I know a few of the politicians too, but they don't bother me at all. You ready? Job's got 42 chapters. 42. Satan shows up one and two. And all he does is challenge God saying, you take his stuff. Watch this. Oh, that's a mess. You want to preach that one? You want to preach that one? If you lose your stuff, will you lose your song? See, we're a stuff-oriented generation. And Satan looks at him and looks at the world and says, you let me take his stuff. He'll curse you to your face. Now, in my mind, in my mind, because I'm a sick man, I need therapy. And I, and, and I just look at him saying, God looks at Job, and he looks at Satan, and he looks at Job, and he looks at Satan, and he goes, give me your best shot. When the smoke clears, my boy will be singing and praising and worshiping. And, and after he lost all this stuff, the Lord gave. Blessed is the name of the Lord. The Lord gave. The Lord took away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And I can see when Satan comes back in the next chapter, I see God on his throne going. Hey, Lou. Because his name was Lucifer. Hey, Lou. Have, have you been by the farm lately? Could you just watch Satan's face? Because <laughs> he don't know. Oh, God, I feel. I'm going. I can't see. If, you, if I fall down, you pick me up, okay? I'm all right. I'm all right. I just, I, is this a flat floor? I'm okay. Right? Here we go. You ready? And, and he lost all this stuff. He lost his 401k. He lost all his retirement. He lost his social security. He lost everything. And he says, well, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. Bless the name of the Lord. And God's going. <laughs> and here comes Lou again. And he says, hey, have you been by Job's place lately? Have you heard the singing? Have you heard the music? Have you... <sighs> skin for skin. Everything a man has will he give for his health and his strength and his skin. You let me touch his body and he'll curse you in your face. Watch God go. Give me your best shot. Now you got to hear, I know I'm boring you right now with a brilliant message, but it's okay. You ready? He touches him and he slaps him with boils from head to toe. And he's sitting with a pot shirt and he's scraping the board. Wait a minute. And still praising. And still worshiping. Though he slay me, yet. You ready for this, Doc? Now, all you guys doing your little Mount Rushmore thing and your nice little high roll of seats, you're up here. Now it's time to get your duff off the seat. You ready? Forty chapters later, you never find Satan on Job's farm because he don't know what to do with people who will worship when they're hurting, who will sing when they're crying. He don't know how to deal with people. Who the deep in their soul said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh my God. I, I'm, happy birthday. I can't believe he's 40. I, I, he was always nine. I don't, I don't, give me just a few more minutes. Yeah, that, that, that lady I was telling you about, the one with the hot air balloon thing. I don't, I don't like, I don't think this is, we don't need all this. I said, well, well, what do you think we ought to be doing? He says, well, I, I, think, I think things ought to be done decent and in order. I said, you think this bucking and snorting and running and jumping and talking in tongues and whistling and carrying on, you think that's out of order? Oh, definitely. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Take your ignorant self down to Arling Cemetery. Everything there is decent and in order. <laughs> the tombstones are lined up. And everything there is dead. I ain't going to a church that's dead. I'm not going to a church that ain't going to happen, baby. I'm going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord with gladness. I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'm going to bless his name. Why? Been good to me. 
been good to me. Now, if he hasn't been good to you, just play your little silly church game. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, he took me out of the honky tonks. He took me out of the bars. He took me out of lying and smoking, and drinking and cheating and turned my life around. I got to praise him. I got to make a joyful noise. Why? Because my mistakes took me to a new level. Give, 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 me, just give me seven minutes. It's, it's 9.20. I think it's, no, 7.20. Give me just 10 minutes. I'm going to make a couple of statements here for you, okay? You ain't never heard this. You ain't never heard this. And I, and I didn't get it from the internet because I don't own a computer. I don't have an iPad. You ain't going to worry about me. I worry about people who are always preaching dead men's sermons. <laughs> God gave me something. And I'm standing here and I'll face the judgment of God whether he gave it to me or not. You need to hear me. God showed me when I was studying and praying over this message. You need to get this. If nothing else, get this. Ready? Your mistakes will never nullify his love for you. Look, that's powerful. That's powerful. Now watch. Now I got one more for bozos like me. You ready? And your mistake will never disqualify you from God using you. Oh, that's too wussified. That's too... You got to understand, God wants to use you in spite of your mistake. God wants to let that mistake open a door of possibility and a, a door of discovery where you can step into a place that you knew nothing about. Because mistakes have a ministry. They make us get honest. They make us be con confessing our mistakes and shortcomings. So we look to God for help. Please be seated. I, I hope I, you're not snoring, are you? Okay, uh, well, watch. I, I read the story about Elijah. He's my man. He, he, to me, he's the greatest Old Testament prophet there was. Him and Moses show up at the Mount of Transfiguration. They're, they're the guys. But, but he made this mistake. He let that old bag cause him to abandon his post. He's A-W-O-L. He's run out. Now, I can't understand it. When I see him, I'm going to ask him. I said, how in the name of God could you call fire down from heaven? And then end a three and a half year drought with a little 63 word prayer. And you get a note from this old bag and she runs you out of town. Oh, that's another message you can preach. Have you read your mail lately? I get hate mail. I get emails. I get people griping and complaining. That don't bother me. That bunch of garbage. That don't bother me. Stupid people are everywhere. I tell people all the time, if you don't love me, you're stupid. And I'll tell you why. Because God loves me. Why would you not love me if God loved you? God has taken me past my mistakes. And allowed me to be used by him and for him. And that's what he wants to do with you. And I got to impregnate your minds with this thought. Even though you've made some mistakes and you've made some wrong decisions and you went the wrong way and you did this and you did that. Fine. I'm not glorifying wrongdoing. I'm just saying wrongdoing is not as powerful as God doing. Now, now you can correct me later, Bishop, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. You'd be wrong. But you can correct me later anyway. You can't find one scripture from 1 Kings 17 to 1 Kings 19 where Elijah ever had an interaction with an angel. Not once. It took a mistake to do that. You, you, happy birthday. You, watch. No angel showed up in his life till after his mistake. Why? Because after your mistake, that's when you need a visitation of the supernatural. That's when you need a touch from another world. That's, uh, 
I wish I could get a witness right now. Has not God helped you and touched you after you failed, after you fell down, after you said things you shouldn't have, done things you shouldn't have? Has not God's great grace and mercy swept into your life and said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never put on you more than you're able to bear. With every test and every trial, I'll make a way of escape. Can, can I preach a few more minutes? Just a few more minutes, please. Uh, please just bear with me just a minute. I just, it, it ain't easy being retired and half blind. Okay? So uh, you, you just, you gotta, you stick with me just for a minute. I'm gonna say it again. God never brings up your mistakes. Your adversary does. Fellow believers do. And here's the worst one, and I do. I am my worst enemy. I have beat myself down so many times over things I've said and done or failed to do. You gotta watch out because when you talk to yourself, you cast the final vow. Am I making sense yet? I'm sorry to keep looking at you guys, but I haven't seen two old preachers sitting on a platform in a long time. You've been gargling your Geritol? All right, okay. You'll be there shortly. Just laugh all you want to. You look in the mirror and all of a sudden, more of that hair's gone. Snickers, Snickers. I'm sorry for being so happy, but see, I've never got over being saved. I've never got over enjoying the Holy Ghost. I've never got over the fact that I'm loved by a love that will not let me go. And even though I make terrible mistakes and terrible blunders, they do not any way disqualify me from God using me again. Sit down a second. Because Elijah made a terrible mistake by running away. But it didn't stop the angel from coming and blessing him and helping him and saying, the journey's too great for you. Here, here's some groceries. Yeah. You got to hear me. Abraham, the father of the faithful, he made some terrible mistakes. He went down, according to Genesis 13, into Egypt and lied to Pharaoh. That's my man. You people are looking for a pure family tree. You ain't going to get it out of the Bible. The, the, the people that God built his kingdom with were liars. Yeah. Noah had a problem with getting bombed. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Right after the greatest miracle ever recorded in human history, God saved Noah and his family. He comes out to a refreshed and renewed earth and gets himself drunk. And God looks at him and says, that's my boy. That's, that's my boy. See, and I watch out. You're looking at me saying, oh God, they're all going to get drunk. No, they're not. No, I'm not asking you to go get drunk. I'm just saying, God did not let his mistake stop the future ministry. And when Abraham went down and lied, about, that's my sister and that's my brother, the Bible said, God plagued the house of Pharaoh until he let Abraham go. Now watch, he didn't let him go empty. He gave him oxen, he gave him sheep, he gave him gold, he gave him silver. So there is a blessing on the other side of a mistake if you handle it right. Come on, the, the, the issue is the attitude of gratitude. That's the issue. You got to have an attitude of thankfulness. I don't know about you, but I am thankful for the throne of grace. I'm so glad that we can go to the throne of grace in the time of trouble to receive help when we have need of it. I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all unrighteousness and all sins. So no matter how many times I've made a mistake, I can plead the blood. Don't you? people plead the blood don't you Woo. you can sit down I'm almost done Abraham my friend the father of the faithful you, you, Jared told boys you, you got it right now father and son here you got it you ready watch and, and, and the Bible says Abimelech 
took Sarah. Now, and I don't want to mess with your Bellevue theology, but I'm right anyway. God had promised to give her a miracle child. Before she had the child, apparently he started the process of restoration and renewal because she looked like a fox. Yeah. At nine. No, you didn't hear me. <laughs> Ain't no king going to get the chick that looks like a prune or a raisin. God had started a process in her body and she was a knockout. Because Abimelech looked out there and said, Hubba, hubba, that ain't no blubber. <laughs> Woo, baby. And he, and, he, and he grabbed her and took her in his harem. I'll give you another message. All this stupidity that we preach in this movement is so ignorant. Said that God won't violate human will and God won't override human choice. I don't want to hurt your feelings. You're all crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. The Bible said that God came to Abimelech at night and said, Thou art a dead man. He said, How come? He says, You took a man's wife. Watch what he says. Well, she said, That's my brother. He said, That's my sister. In the integrity of my heart have I done this. He said, I know in the integrity of your heart you made this decision. Watch. Therefore, I kept you back from sinning against me. Don't tell me I can't override human will. Now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're snoring. I'm so sorry. You got to hear this. On the edge and the heels of that mistake. Liar, liar, pants on fire, deception, right? Watch what God says. Oh, by the way, he shut up all the wombs of Abimelech's wives and maidens. They couldn't produce children. So he was there for a while. You don't have a kid in three days. That takes nine months, okay? So they ain't having no bubbles and no bambinos being born. Now watch what God says. This God says, you got to get up. When I finish this, get up and shake, rattle, and roll just for a minute. Are you ready? Here we go. Here what it says. He lied. He deceived. He caused the trouble. He made a terrible mistake. And God turns around and says, call for Abraham, the guy that lied to you. And ask him to pray for you. Watch this. For he is a prophet. You don't lose your position because you make a mistake. You don't lose your calling because you made a mistake. You don't lose the blessings of God in your life because you've made a mistake. Had he been among us, here's what we would have said. He used to be a prophet. He was a prophet. But not God. He said, oh no, he is a prophet right now. You ready for this? And you ask him to pray for you. If not, you're a dead man. But if he prays for you, I'll give you life. So here's a guy that's made the biggest mistake in his life, but he can still pray the prayer of faith. He can still act in the Holy Ghost. He can still do works for the kingdom of God. Why? Because your mistakes do not disqualify you from God using you in the future. I need five minutes and I'm done. Happy birthday. I'm, all, I'm almost done. Please forgive me for, for just going all over the praise. This is so powerful. This, this, just, this just gets me. Wow. God will not bring up your mistake. He'll let you bring it up. He'll let your adversary bring it up. He'll, he'll let your supposed believing friends bring it up. Listen, baby, when you confess and you repent, you ain't got no past. Amen. What we need in this movement is a, baptized, a baptism of apostolic amnesia. Because the Lord turned around and told us to the Old Testament prophets, and he said, and their sins, their sins will I remember no more. Aren't you glad when you repented of your sins, got water baptized in Jesus' name? Aren't you glad you lost your mistakes? You lost your messes? You... I, 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 I can't get you people to respond yet. Are you ready? 
Come on, I'll get out of the spirit world and I'll get to the world in which you live in. We'll go to the carnal world. You ready? Vince Lombardi made a great statement. This ought to get you, you football worshipers. You ought to be shouting and talking in tongues. Here's what Lombardi said. The issue is not whether you get knocked down or not. The issue is if you're going to get back up. That's the only thing that counts. I may be down, but I am not out. I may be down, but that is not my destiny. I may have failed, but I am not a failure. I may have fallen, but that's not my end. I got a destiny from God. I'm sorry I haven't preached better. I've heard myself a lot better. I really have. Just that usually I can see, but I, I just can't see very good right now. I just can't. Mista- Let me try it again. Mistakes are doorways to discovery. They are portals to possibility. A portal is just an entranceway, a passageway from one level to the next. You got to look at it and say, okay, I messed up. I, I said something I shouldn't have said. I watched something I shouldn't have watched. I did something I shouldn't have done. Fine. Good. Now that you admitted it, let the mistake minister to you. How many of you made a mistake in the natural world? And, and that mistake helped you do it right the next time. It helped you become more honest. It helped you not to do it that way. That's the ministry of mistakes. Mistakes are designed to, to either maim you or make you. I'm, I'm almost done. John 8, they catch that woman in adultery in the very act. That's an interesting story. In the very act. Pinocchio. In the tent. Oh. <laughs> Grabs the lady. She's naked. Probably has a piece of cloth trying to run down the street. That's always bothered me. Where's the dude that was in sex with her? Was he a priest? Who was that guy? Caught him in the act. How come you grabbed the girl, not the guy? Grab her down the street. I think this is so funny. I know it's your birthday. We're trying to blow the candles out in just a minute. Hold on. This is so amazing. They bring her down. The dumbest thing anybody could ever do is to take somebody who's made a mistake to Jesus. Are you stupid or what? Because you know what he's going to do? Let him that's made no mistakes throw the rocks. Boy, Sister, Sister Varnum, I know you've been a wonderful singer all these years. You ought to sing a song about that. I hear a third. I hear a third. Because all those old buzzards who think they don't have no mistakes till the Lord said, you got no mistakes, throw it. And it was like, third, third. Third, 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 I got to go, third, 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 third. Oh, man. And the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, making a terrible mistake, humiliated and embarrassed, came to put her at his feet. Said, where's them that accused you? Hath no man condemned you? No man. Well, I don't either, lady. Come on, get over the mistake. You got things to do. That's what I'm trying to tell this service tonight. Get over your mistake. You got things to do. Get over your mistake. Get over your failure. Get over your falling down. Get back up. I heard the prophet say, rejoice enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in the darkness, the Lord shall be my light. It's time to get up and get over it and get going. You, you, can, you can stay with me. Uh, you don't have to stay with me. Uh, you don't have to pay me. I, I, I didn't preach good. It's okay. I got pages and pages and pages. I, 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 I just wondered. You got, what do you got now? Six kids? Eight kids? How many kids you got? Every time I turn around, Holly's going, oh. I mean, this guy's like a production theater here. What do you got? Four, five, six, five, uh, four, four. four. Let me ask you a question. Ready? You got those babies. All they do is crawl until the drive gets a hold of them. 
and desire gets a hold of them and they want to go from crawling to walking yeah. now now come on we we people who are moms and dads we we know when they get up yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right and then, and then they go <laughs> bam yeah. and they get back up bam yeah more tears Ah, more crying, but the desire to walk and the drive to walk helps them overcome the fall. I want to ask you something as I leave this great church. If a baby can get up over multiple falls, what's holding you down? What's holding you back? Come on. Wipe your tears off. Try it again. Go again. Come on, we need to break out in some praise and worship right now. Hallelujah. Let your mistake work for you. Let your fall work for you. Because your mistake will never disqualify you. And your mistake will never nullify God's love for you. Your love with a love that will not let you go. Woo! Come on, let's... Let's, let's, let's clap just a few minutes, okay? Just, just a few minutes. Woo! Don't allow your mistake to define you. The devil is a liar. Don't allow your mistake to define you. God wants to forgive. God wants to bless. God wants you. Don't let that lying devil tell you you don't have a future. I heard Luke 15, the prodigal son we always talk about, okay? He ran away from home. He insulted his dad. He, he lived like a fool. He did all kinds of stupid stuff, squandered his money. Watch. Finds himself in a pig pen. He says, I, here's what I want to preach. I will arise. Didn't need nobody to wipe his nose. Didn't nobody to comb his hair. Didn't need nobody to powder his bottom. He just turned around and said, I will arise. Arise what? I'm going to rise after my worst mistake. And I'm going back to my dad. And the last part of that verse says, and he arose. It's one thing to say you're going to arise. It's another thing to say you arose. So if you've got an intention right now, let's go back to God for just a few minutes. Let's reach back to God for just a few. Get over your mistake. Don't let your mistake maul you. Don't let your mistake mess with you. Don't let your mistake hold you hostage. Because the mistake will either be a prison house or a pathway to discovery. Okay, you do it. Maybe down more than it's up, but it keeps getting up. It keeps getting up. You got to get up. You got to get up. You got to get up. You may have failed. You are not a failure. You may have made a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are a potential miracle. My God, I'm about ready to have a fit. There's a miracle on the other side of your mistake. There's a miracle on the other side of your mistake. Don't be held hostage by people's opinions or your own bad feelings. Get up. Go. Make a journey. Reach out to God.
I'm assuming as I leave this pulpit, those of you that don't clap and don't whistle and don't shout and don't dance and don't get emotional, you're the mistakeless people. Please, please forgive the rest of us wackos because we've been forgiven by so many mistakes we've made. I just got to bust a move. I just got to get excited. I just got to give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you get with someone and begin to rejoice? If God forgave you, if God gave you a second chance, come on, let this place erupt. Let the praises of God be in your hands. Yalla bir ardıra, gayet